Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to do a painting of a fox in watercolor pencil. We're gonna be using some pencils from Amaze Rock. They are a uh, pretty new company and they are sponsoring today's video. And they have this set of 36 pencils for, I think the sale price is about $21.30. So it's crazy inexpensive. Regular price on these is $47. And um, I just like that they come in a wrap. So the packaging they're sold in is useful and reusable and you don't have to throw it away and uh, it's very useful too. So what I did was I took the pencils and I swatched them out as soon as I got them to make sure that they were decent and here is my swatch sheet here and you can see you get a nice variety of colors. This was just colored with regular pressure not heavy pressure and I used quite a bit of water and they all dissolved really well so I'm very happy to be able to use these and they are giving away three sets of these watercolor pencils to my viewers and I will have a link to the giveaway and where you can buy them in the video description as well as a 10% off coupon code. They're going to put that on their website too. So you can just grab that order and save even more money. So um, for about 20 bucks to get this set of 36 pencils, I think it's a great value. So I have a, a pattern that you can also download and print if you want to of this fox. So if you don't feel like sketching it, you don't have to. And we are going to zoom in and get right down to business. I'm starting off by grabbing some shades of brown, red, and orange so that I can do the uh, main part of the fox. And I'm going to start in by coloring. And I am going to grab this um, kind of golden brown color and apply that uh, under the fox's head, kind of on the body of the fox. I just want to uh, very, very lightly put down some color here because the colors are going to be a lot more intense once we add water. So you want to make sure that you don't, uh, you don't overdo it. So because uh, you can always add more, <laughs> taking it away might be a little bit more tricky. So I'm just using the edge of the pencil. The thing just to keep in mind is not to dent the paper when you're coloring, because if you dent the paper, you're going to end up with dark lines there, and you're not going to be able to soften them uh, as easily. So by starting off dry paper and dry coloring with light pressure, everything will be blendable. So you'll be able to, to smooth everything out beautifully. And uh, the nice thing about watercolor pencils is you don't need as many as you would for like a regular wax pencil because they blend so well with water. If you're following along with um, a different medium, such as a regular colored pencil, you are going to have, you're probably going to spend a little more time and you will need um, a greater variety of colors. I probably suggest working on a toned background just to kind of save yourself a little bit of color. We're going to be uh, kind of doing some crazy colors in the background just for fun because the fox is so neutral and that will actually make him stand out more if we use some crazy background colors. So um, this is part of your artistic license. You can always do that. Uh, um, keeping the chest fairly white at this point, um, I'm going to go in with this orange super, super lightly and overlap that for the gold that I just put down there. Any place I want to deepen the color, especially on the back and the tail to give it that iconic um, red fox look. The reference photo, I'll also link down below, is very dull in color, so I am going to be pumping up the color a bit. And the paper I'm using is inexpensive Aqua B paper. It is 100% cotton, but it's really inexpensive. So um, you get to, I like that. I like to find stuff that's high quality and inexpensive to recommend because you know, we can't always just go and spend, you know, $10 a sheet on Arches watercolor paper. And sometimes when you do spend that much, we're too nervous to use it because it's so precious and expensive. And um, I think I'm just going to grab some brown here. Maybe I'll do the softer brown and add a little bit of that towards the bottom of the tail. Just to give it a little bit of shadow around the edges here and under the chin because I want that to stand out. So basically when I know I need a bunch of a color, I will tend to do that right dry on the paper. And then as I need to adjust later on, that's when I will um, like pick up the, pen, the paint from the tip of the lead. I don't like to do that right off the bat because once the lead is wet, if I do decide that I want to color some of that in, um, it will like, uh, leave me a hard line of the paper if that tip of the pencil is wet at all because it just you get that concentrated color down and uh, that is not what I want quite yet. I will add a little bit under the mouth here and that's going to be blended out. I will put more in darker later and uh, this is just going to give me kind of my my basics. Now the back of the ears are very dark but I don't want to go ahead and put black in. I rarely use black 
So if I'm going to use it, it's going to be a last detail because it can muddy everything else up um, really easily because it just it's just a dull color. It's a it's a color that, that wants to muddy and I don't want anything muddied yet. All right, so I think that's good enough to start right now. I am going to use a about a half inch flat or angled brush. Mine ha happens to be angled, but a flat will work just fine. And I am just going to kind of wiggle my brush on the pencils gently on the uh, the paper where I put my pencil just to kind of soften it and turn it into watercolor. Now I'd like something with a sharp edge like that because then I can make sure I'm getting my uh, crisp edges that I want like towards the chest here. And a flat brush gives you a little bit um, like uh, more dissolving power because you can um, wiggle it and kind of disperse your pigment a little bit better than a round brush. A round brush is much more um, better for holding more water. So that's why when I'm doing regular watercolor watercolor paintings, I tend to use mostly round brushes, but when I'm doing watercolor pencils, watercolor crayons, or anything that's got a little more viscosity to it, I go with the flats. And if you have any hard edges or any concentrations of pigment you don't like, you can just kind of um, wiggle it out there with your brush. Now because you're not using as much water as you would with a regular watercolor, you can work in your sketchbook. If your sketchbook can take a little bit of like ink, it will be fine with your watercolor pencils. Like a Canson mixed media paper, what I swatched on, that is ideal for this type of medium. Um, but if you are going to use more water and do some of the more watercolory techniques I'm going to show you in a few minutes, you're going to want the more robust watercolor paper. It's nice to have a sketchbook though that can handle a little bit of this so that way um, you can feel like you can practice any time. And the nice thing about working in a sketchbook is that like when you've got it filled up, you get to look back and be like, wow, look how much I progressed. And you don't get that uh, as well when you just have a bunch of loose uh, pictures hanging around. So when I do this, I'm trying to like get almost like a little hairy zigzag area in the back so you can kind of see that this is furry and not sleek. If you do it too much though, your fox will look a little mangy, so you don't want that to happen either. You just want to get a little bit of texture, but you know, you don't want to look like he's rabbit or anything. Just a few extra lines can make the difference between looking cute and fluffy and looking mangy, so keep that in mind. When your brush breaks apart like that and you see your bristles go um, kind of splitty, you could dry brush some other texture a little bit. Just kind of flick some out. I just kind of drag it a little bit on the ears when my brush gets like that. You can always do that later with a liner, but if your brush is, is uh, at that level, then you can, you can do that. I can also spread out the color a little bit more if I see that I want some of that tone someplace I didn't color. Like I didn't color areas that I knew were going to be a little bit lighter, so I can spread that out a little bit. Uh, the key is just not to put too much media down. If you put too much down, you can end up um, making more work for yourself and wasting product. Now we're not putting a ton of water here, so our paper is going to dry on us fairly quickly, which means we'll be able to overlap without um, getting hard lines. But whenever you're going to go back on the paper with your pencils, you just want to make sure that you that it's it's either dry or you're expecting it to be to get some really dark lines. So now I want some kind of like gray shadows in the tail and the chest, and I'm just going to go ahead and um, use one of these gray colors. And what I'm going to do is actually test it. I'm get, I'm wetting the um, the tip here and I'm just on my board there looking at what I have. I like this color. I didn't want to use a light gray here because there's just, it would it's almost, it's got so much white in it that it wouldn't show up the way I want it to. And you can almost get like a chalky look if you add, um, if you add like a pastel pencil. I'm glad the only real pastel ones would be obviously your white and your, uh, that really like light gray. And I'm going to put some of that over here. So when you lift up the color from the tip of the, of the pencil, it's essentially like a watercolor pan. You can use it the same way. That's why it makes it so nice for travel. You can just take your set of pencils and not have to have a, um, a full set of watercolors. You get the best of both worlds. You can color with these dry. There's no reason you can't. 
especially if you're looking at ways to go outside and paint and not bring, whoops, not bring everything but the kitchen sink. I'm letting my bristles get splitty again. And then I'm going to, on the inside of the ear a little bit here and try to get some of the uh, fur texture. I like to work with a, uh, a larger brush when I begin because you won't get fuss, fussy with the details. I could put these uh, big shadows in the clumps of fur. And I can even do a little bit of this on the back. Sometimes I just want a little bit of water on, so I'll just tap it into that, that little puddle I had over there. You can have like a, a ceramic plate or something handy for using as a little palette. I'm just using the board that I taped my, my paper down to. That works really well. Now I'm really thinking that this um, this dark gray here is going to be perfect for my darkest value. I don't think I'm going to need to like incorporate a black. And whenever possible, I keep using the colors that I've already used. So a lot of times I'll, I'll just keep them together. Um, so like I'll put them all together in like a jar as I'm working or um, I'll lay them on the pencil wrap or something so I don't end up grabbing other colors that I haven't used yet. I find that to be a really great way to limit my palette and not get overboard with color. So now I'm going to switch to a, um, a round brush here and I am going to dissolve some of this color that I put on the, uh, the mouth and the snout here. I'm not going for a crisp line, I'm just going to um, tone it a little bit. And now I think I'm going to grab some of that um, reddish golden brown color that we used on my round brush. And I am going to put some uh, around the face. And I'm using a really light because uh, this, the, the shading is really subtle here. So I don't want to get in um, more than I bargained for. I also like a loose... Uh, a looser watercolor look so um, that helps me get that with a you know a dry medium I like to have those uh, kind of splashier watercolor effects And I find that uh, it's probably the binder that's in the pencils. It does make it want to um, lift and blend a little easier than like a traditional watercolor. So if you've struggled with that, you might find the pencils to be a little bit more forgiving. And of course, you can use whatever watercolor pencils you have to follow along. These are just a good option if you need some and you are on a budget. Aren't we all, right? Okay, I'm going to go back to my darker color because I like to get my um, my values in fairly quickly. By the way, the size of the paper that I'm using is 6 inches by 9 inches. I like that size. Um, it's it's also just, it's the only size I think that, that Aqua B paper comes in. Well, it's the only size it comes in uh, for cheap. I think they probably have larger sheets that are more expensive, but um, this is what I use a lot. For my projects because if I mess it up I'm not like worried because it's so inexpensive. And I'm just building up my uh, my colors a little bit. The ears are still a little bit wet so I'm not going to get a super crisp uh, detail so I'm not going super dark with it. And this is not a really fine tip brush it's a little more blunt. I'll, I'm going to save my finer brushes, my finer tip brushes, until I'm like on the detail phase. And I do want to get this nose in. Because I feel like once I get my darker values in, um, the painting starts to 
uh, move along a little quicker because I know how dark I'm going to make things and I kind of know what my parameters for working are, like what's the darkest, what's the lightest I'm going to use. I'm tapping in the line so I don't end up with a, like a cartoon smile on my fox here. I'm just flicking in little uh, little furs wherever I wherever I feel like I need them, um, and I feel like I want a little bit of really pale gray. Matt, I'm dipping in my water here. Just want a little bit of very pale gray on the top of the nose. It almost be reflecting the light. So at this point, and I am going to uh, let the fox dry and work on the background. I want to get some really bright primary colors in the background. I had done a uh, painting of an owl once and I just had these crazy colors in the background and I really enjoyed it and it was one of my most popular tutorials so I thought it'd be fun to kind of do that here as well. So I am going to wet the background pretty well with a large brush. I'm not touching the fox because I'll do that with my little brush that I go in with. And I'm just, um, I'm just wetting the whole background so I have kind of a, a base, um, a base layer of wetness. I probably will need to go back in on sections and re-wet it because cotton paper absorbs. Plus it's winter and my uh, heat's on so your environmental air will also dry things out. I'm going, I'm not going over like the furs or anything because I can, like I said before, do that with the, um, when I paint. I'm going to use a fairly big round brush. This is a number eight. Um, synthetic and I recommend the like golden haired brushes, this, uh, the golden taclons or white taclons for um, or nylon brushes for this because they're not going to hold as much water. You don't want something super absorbent like this like really really soft watercolor brush because you almost just wash away your pigment. I'm going to start in, I think, I think I'll start in with blue. I think blue will look really nice next to the orange and again I am going to be picking up the pigment with the tip of my brush. And also having a Taclon brush, it's a little stiffer than like your softer watercolor brushes, so it's going to grab a lot more pigment. Now look at that flow, isn't that pretty? Now I can, um, I can actually grab a smaller brush like this little um, pointed round Taclon and I can like actually um, very, very gently just kind of draw like a few little lines into the fur just so that you see that it's not, um, like again, we don't want it to look mangy, but we don't want it to look like it's like a solid, you know, a shiny, hard thing. We want it to be a little fluffy, so I'm just pulling in a little bit of that. And again, just using our paint like a, our pencils like a paint, of, like a palette. Now look at the vibrancy. So, you know, I will say not all pencils not all watercolor pencils are created equal, you know, usually you get what you pay for and your more expensive watercolor pencils perform a little bit better, uh, but these work really well, so I'm very pleased that they're at a affordable price. Okay, another thing I like to do is do a little spattering and I'll just like flick my brush across the tip. Now another thing, some, uh, some watercolor brands will say don't do this with your pencils. Um, and I can understand, you know, because some pencils cost, you know, a set of pencils will cost $200, but when you're paying $21, you can feel free to have fun and to enjoy the process a little bit more. So that's what I really, I really like about it. Um, so, you know, if you have really expensive watercolor pencils and they say on the box, do not get the tip wet, then I would follow the manufacturer's instructions, but, um, but I've done this with all the pencils I have. I've never had a problem. But then, but I don't want you to ruin anything if there's something, um, if your pencils say specifically not to do that. Now I'm going to go back in. I am going to rinse off that brush so I don't get blue where I don't want it. And I am going to drag that in. That's pretty. Now I think I'll put like a little uh, purple in there because um, well, actually, let me let me drag that 
color around a little bit. Um, I'm going to put a little purple from the pencil because this blue is so vivid and vibrant and beautiful, but it's also a little green base. So if I try to mix a purple with those two colors, it's going to go more gray on me and I don't want that. So, um, so I'm going to actually use some purple in just a second. Sometimes I will kind of fake a little splashing and just kind of dab my brush around. And I'm going to go back in with my small brush and more pigment. Again, I can flick it on like that, too. I'd like to do that. And notice that I didn't wait until I was done the fox to do the background. Because I think sometimes we get a little freaked out if we get something perfect. And we're like, well, I don't want to do the background now because I'll mess up my I'll mess up my painting. So I recommend doing the background either first or after you've just got your first layer. Like we just got our first layer on that. So what if we mess it up? We've only split, you know, 15 minutes into it. It's not a big deal. Um, it, I feel like that just gives you a little more permission to play. Oh my. Okay, here's what you don't want to do. Don't drop your pencils. That's like <laughs> that's the worst thing you can do for your pencils, especially if they're the wax-based ones. Um, so teachable moment, right? I like the teachable moments. <laughs> you certainly don't want to drop your $100 pencils. I don't want to drop my $20 pencils either, but you know, that happens. And I'm just adding it with these colors mixed so that I can get that uh, pretty spectrum of color. And I can get my brush really juicy and just kind of tap on some of that too. Isn't that pretty? I like it. You don't have to do that though. If you want to do like neutral tones in the background, feel free. That's your picture, your choice. I like lots of color. And you know, I'm experimenting. I'm having fun. I'm playing. Now something that you're going to run into um, with either regular watercolor or this technique is if you start to put um, color down and the area is already drying. So like if you look here, if I tip this a little bit, you're going to see that um, the, where the purple is, I just put that's really wet and over here it's starting to dry. So if I don't do anything, I'm going to end up with a funky hard edge where that um, wetter area meets the drier area, which you can leave if you like that, go ahead and leave it. If you don't like it, re-wet the area so you can even that out a little bit. So you get those hard edges in watercolor and watercolor pencil when you have your surface drying at uneven times. So I'm just going to go ahead and re-wet this whole area over here so I can keep working without any unexpected hard edges. Now I'm not saying it's bad, it can give you a really cool effect, but um, I want to be able to I want to be able to control where that, where those hard edges are happening. If I want to like flick on some water later and get those on purpose, then that's fine. But I want to be able to control that. So that's what I'm doing there. I am going to go in with a little bit more of my blue. And you don't need a big, um, a, as big of a cup of water either when you're working with watercolor pencils because you're not going to lose as much pigment in your bucket of water as you would with watercolor. So. If you're traveling, you can have just like a tiny little little cup of water and be all set. Okay, I'll do a little flicking just to make that kind of all mesh together a little bit better. Now I'm going to do a little green. I do want to make sure that my edges are good um, when it's touching the fox so that it defines it and makes him stand out a little bit better. The colors that I'm choosing for the background are my more vivid ones, so I just looked at my swatch really quickly. What I really should do, probably after I'm, I'm done here, I'm going to number the colors on my swatch because I was just kind of counting them, but I realized I have all my pencils out now and they're probably not going back in the thing in the, in the same order, so I think what I'll probably end up doing is making a long strip of a swatch to stick into my, um, to stick into my pencil case so that um, and, and with numbers on it, so if they do get put back in the wrong order, I'll know what's what. But I do find that with, um, if you look at the tip of your watercolor pencils, you can usually tell what your color is going to be like. I don't like to rely on the barrel, but if you look at the tip of the lead itself, you usually can have a pretty good idea of what your color is going to look like. Or just have a scrap of paper you can scribble it on. And I want to go in with my, dart, with my uh, bigger brush because I'm not getting the bigger speckles that I want. A bigger brush holds more water, so you get um, bigger droplets when you flick it. And I'm dabbing some over here so I can kind of bridge the gap between colors a little bit better. Maybe do a little bit down here too. 
Oh, I like this. This is fun. I haven't done a, a background like this since my owl picture last year. This is so much fun. Okay, I want to do some more over there. I'm going to re-clean my brush. I like to wet it with the water instead of color on my brush, so that way I can just kind of let the let the colors do their thing. Okay, so now I'm going back in with my big brush. And you'll notice that some colors um, disperse, like your brighter, more vibrant tones will disperse a little bit better than like your um, earthier tones, like the green isn't flowing as much as the purple and the blue did. Um, and you'll, that's something you're going to get to know with every color the more you use, you use it. So um, there's, no, there's no bad thing about practicing, even if you feel like, oh shoot, I just wasted, you know, a little bit of ink or I just wasted a little bit of, of uh, paper. It's not a waste. If you, if you never make mistakes, you're never learning. You're actually learning faster when you make mistakes. So, you know, please don't, don't feel like you have to be perfect when you do something. And um, I'm actually going to test this one here. I think this is my bright yellow, but the tip of it looks kind of orange. So I'm actually going to test it on my... Pa oh yeah, that's nice and bright yellow. But see what I mean? Sometimes you do I just want to test it out because that looks like it'd almost be orange, but it's actually a nice bright yellow and it makes it more sappy green when I add it over here it gives it an earth tone because it's not like a lemony yellow which would make the green more vibrant and I'm just gonna flick some of that on there all right now I think I might actually take some of that over here too so because I'm going into an area that started to dry what I need to do is I need to re-wet it and I want to even out the surface so I don't get any hard edges. I And you can see when I go over it with water, I'm kind of lifting up that color underneath. I love backgrounds. I think they're so fun. Okay, so I'm hoping, I'm just gonna blot that area right there a little bit. So hopefully I don't end up with a hard edge. We'll see. If I do, I do. If I don't, I don't. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, and I'm going in with my big brush so I can get a lot of color down there. I'm just going to start by flicking it in and I'll dab it in. Oh, that's nice. I like that. And I'm going to grab my red again. I'm not cleaning my brush because I do kind of want a little bit of an orange happening. And I'll get this beautiful rainbow. I love these rainbow backgrounds. They're so cheerful and fun. Oh, I love it. I love it. So if you do have some big puddles, sometimes that happens. Um, if they dry and you leave them alone, you don't notice them and they dry, that's when you end up with cauliflowers. So what I do is I just dry off my brush and I lay it in the puddle and that will sop it up. That way I don't end up with, uh, with puddles where I don't want them. And like I said, you know, some are going to look really cool and you know it just adds a little texture in the background but I like to be able to control that so if I don't want that really cool texture in the background I I don't have to have it so I just think it's important and you know what that's one of those things that you will learn when you experiment you experiment and you say oh that doesn't look the way I want it to well so what your painting isn't the way you wanted it but you learn something right that's the important thing let me know in the comments below if you like these um, if you prefer these kind of narrated, slower, real-time tutorials, or if you prefer a time lapse. I know I give you a variety of different ones, but I'm always just curious to see, you know, what you think. Okay, so that can dry, and I can actually, I don't have to wait for this to dry. I can actually just go right ahead um, on some of the areas of the fox that aren't touching the background. Now, I would not want to work on the edge of the fur at this point, because if I did, um, I would end up with that feathering in. Okay, so if you're going to not wait for the background to dry, just make sure you're not working on top of that area. So you do not have to blend. You can leave your pigment dry if you want to. Like maybe you're going into the eye and you're like, oh, I really, I really don't want to blend that out. I just want to color that in and leave it alone. That is totally fine. Don't feel like you have to wet everything down. It's absolutely not necessary. And I'm going to go in with this dark brown. No, I just scribbled it on my board here just to make sure it was brown and not gray. Because sometimes the leads, when they're really vibrant colors, look a lot darker than they are. You don't see the color as much as you just see the value or how dark it is. So I'm going to go in and just darken the pupil. And the, um, 
the top lash line and then I'm just going to do a little bit on the front of the bottom lash line. I can also go in here and define the nose. I just wouldn't want to add water to this. I can even go in next to this background with dry pencil, but I don't want to add water. If I add water, that's when I'm going to run into trouble, okay? I have to let that dry before I add water to this or there'll be, uh, there'll be trouble right here in River City. And I can also just draw in some texture. I don't have to wet it. If I say, well, hey, that looks pretty good. I don't think I'm gonna, I'm gonna wet that. I like seeing those furs. I can do that. Another thing you can do is you can sharpen your pencil if you want a really uh, sharp line, like for a um, for the whiskers. Now, I wouldn't do the whiskers till you're done the detailing in the face, but all you do is just sharpen it in your regular sharpener. It's always a good idea to turn the sharpener and not the pencil. I find that very difficult to, I always want to turn the, turn the pencil, but um, you know, just to, just to give you a do as I say, not as I do type of type of tip. You can stop your bad habits, hopefully, before they begin to become bad habits. Um, like I, I really like the shading I did with the wet pencil to begin with, so I'm just going over with a dry pencil and I'm going to leave that be. I'm going to do the same thing over here because uh, I like the shading I have underneath. I don't feel like I have to do more layers over here other than just maybe some some definition. And I can also go to the edges if I'm not going to wet it. I don't have to worry about it. So I'm just going to throw in some shading on the side that I am not going to wet because my pencil is sharp and I'm getting those nice detailed lines. I also want to do some, I don't even need to sharpen it, it doesn't need to be that that uh, that sharp. I can do some with my other shades that I've already used. Remember when you are doing something like fur, this is a little blunt actually, if you are doing something like fur, you want to make sure that you are very careful that your lines go with the contour of the thing you're drawing. So I'm making sure that my strokes are matching the contour of this tail. I don't want to do strokes going that way or strokes going that way. I want them going with the direction of my tail here. Now the great thing about watercolor pencils is that if I realize that oh I put too much detail in there, I can just take a damp brush and I can soften it. Okay, so if you put a bunch of lines in there and you're like, oh, I overdid it, darn it, that's too detailed, you just use your damp brush and you can soften that away. And you're going to get a much more interesting um, depth of color if you do use all the colors that you originally sketched with. Even though it seems like some of these colors aren't going to show up very well, it's going to build up the texture and give you that... Um, that depth of color and do the same thing on the back over here. Now I would try not to make um, the tail, the tail is alright, I try not to make the back as detailed as like the face because that's going to be your focal point so you want to kind of let this be a little like kind of fuzzier and sketchier. And don't, don't go too crazy with it. And move your paper. If you're finding that you have a really hard time getting the, the fur to go in the right direction the way you're sitting, moving the paper will help you. Like I'm finding this a little awkward, but I want you to be able to see what I'm doing really well. So that's why I have it kind of centered up like that. But um, you don't have to do that. When you're sketching, you turn your paper whichever way is more comfortable for you. And we're going to do a little bit of the same here on the back of the neck with our colors that we used to originally do our washes. So here I'm, I'm looking at the back of the neck to help guide me and also the fluff in the chest. You will have a little bit of conflicting lines here because the, the, turn, the, the body's turned when you have fur turned, it's sticking out all the way around the neck is like a cylinder and the fur is sticking out in all directions on that cylinder. Kind of like a Christmas tree and you see the branches coming at you um, from different directions. One, you can see them, some sticking out on either side and then some sticking out towards you and all the way around, like, like daisy, daisy petals. And I'm going to put a little of this on the ear as well and I might not need to, uh, to soften that out anymore. So you can continue on and add as much uh, fur detailing as you want. I'm going to go in a little bit with this um, with this dark gray, but I am going to sharpen it. I 
also find that I can uh, go a little longer between sharpening if I turn my pencil as I go. That I, it just helps me uh, keep a point on the tip of the pencil a little bit longer and helps me conserve my materials. I'm always I'm always big on conserving materials, even if my my materials aren't expensive, because there's no point in wasting just because something doesn't cost a lot of money. There's also no point in saving expensive supplies because you're afraid of wasting them. They're they're both false economies. on some of the face detail and um, I apologize how long this tutorial has been but I hope that you're taking the opportunity to sketch along with me um, and color along with me because I think that can that can be helpful sometimes when we time-lapse things I think we make it I think we can we almost give the impression that it's easier than it is and then or that it's quicker than it is and then people get disappointed when they when they go to do it themselves. I mean, on the other hand, it gives people that might not sit down, you know, to a full tutorial, a peek at how to do it, and then they can, you know, practice it on their own. So that's why I think it's nice to have both, but I really think that it's, it's nice to have a longer tutorial sometimes so that you can kind of dive deep and, and uh, kind of paint along without feeling stressed out. Let me know what you think. Uh, maybe I'm putting too much thought in the, <laughs> into this. I don't know, probably. Okay, so I am going to soften that out just a little bit. I am going to use just a small round brush, and I'm going to wet it, make sure it's clean. I'm going to dab it just so it's damp, okay? I don't want it sopping wet because I don't want to overwet my paper and uh, disturb the stuff underneath. So very gently, I am tapping these lines that I just put in and just kind of dissolving the pencil a little bit and doing some shading. That's going to help bring a little structure on the nose. And I'm just going to spread it out. I am curious as to how the white pencil will work. I, I, I typically don't use white watercolor pencils. Um, I don't find they stand out usually. I guess if I was going to work on like craft paper for card making, that would be really fun to color it with a white colored pencil, a uh, white watercolor pencil rather. Um, but I am kind of curious to see how that would work and maybe if it would give me a little body in like the face where I have lighter fur. And I think maybe if I just use it in the face, it might give me a, um, you know, a... a uh, more focal. It might bring a little more attention to the face. So I'm going to try it. I'm going to um, I'm going to try dissolving the ink a little bit or the pencil lead. I don't know why I call it ink. Um, the pencil lead a little bit, probably because it's so vibrant like ink. Uh, and then seeing if I get kind of like a uh, a gouache here, which is just an opaque watercolor. You can actually flick that. I bet that would look kind of cool flicked in the background too. Um, I'm just kind of curious as to what will happen. Okay, it seems to like just tone down my colors a little bit, which is handy if you got too much color on your fox and you feel like you just would like to kind of kick it back a notch. You can do like almost like an adjustment layer with it. So, but th so that's you know something you can use it for. I you I would just try not to get too fussy with it because it's not going to have a huge impact. Let's see if I use it. Um, because the tip is wet, I know I'm going to get the strongest color possible, uh, which will help, I think, with white. In fact, I'm going to dip it in my water. Um, and I'm going to see what happens there, see if that gives me any, any benefit there. It is letting me put down a little bit of color, but you know, it's still white, and I don't have a really dark area I'm working on, so it's not giving me that, that much, that much color. I can kind of use it here and it will kind of uh, blend my colors a bit, but I think this is probably going to be one of those pencils I save to use on like craft paper if I'm doing some rubber stamping just to like kind of lighten an area up. I don't think it's going to be as useful um, for this. Now, because the, the face is a little wet, if I'm very careful, I can go in and add some details that I will not be able to blend away. So that would be like the... Uh, little bit, you know like where they have their, their whiskers come out, you see these little dots, these little rows of dots, I can go and put those in there. No pressure, because the paper is wet, I don't have to use any pressure and it just grabs that pigment. Now because this is sharp, and you just, just make sure that you're absolutely sure that you know where these whiskers are going, because this is sharp, I can go in and I can put 
a few whiskers in. There, don't overdo it. Okay, seriously, if you, you're you better off to have no whiskers or just have like two whiskers and to overdo this step. And um, I can also go in and add a little detail in the eye. Now something I'll often do if I want a super white highlight and I haven't left it out is I'll use a gel pen. And you could definitely do that here. I'm gonna add just some deeper shadows in the back, like around the face, around behind the face. I'm gonna add some in the ears. In fact, I think I will wet the ears a little bit. I'm gonna use my finest tip brush here for that because I wanna make sure that um, I'm not over smudging stuff. And then I'm gonna go in with my sharpened dark brown pencil and get just some little furs. Don't overdo it, like I said, because you can't blend this away. When you go into wet paper with your pencil, you're kind of uh, committing it. I'm gonna do the same thing on this back ear first, just dampening it. And then I'm gonna go in with my dark brown pencil. I'm not using the gray because I think the gray might be too harsh if I go in on, on, um, on wet paper and I'm just putting in the furs, just short little fur strokes and make sure you're going uh, kind of from the head out to the edge of the ear, kind of at an angle. So this is the angle that I'm going at, okay? Hopefully that, that makes sense. And then I'm going to do the same to the front ear. Just gently liquefy that a little bit and do my little furry strokes here. I chose a very simple project, a simple photo for this because I know you could always make something, uh, you could always add more detail and make something a little more complicated if you want to, or you can leave it simpler if you prefer. I thought that would give um, everyone a little bit of variety and they can choose how detailed or how how uh, plain they want to leave it because it's still going to look pretty. It's, it's just one of those kind of versatile, versatile images. I feel like I went a little bit darker in there. And then I am going to um, soften some of the fur that I sketched on because I don't want, I, I feel like some of this ought to be a little bit softer. And I'm using my um, half inch flat for this or angle. And I'm just kind of tapping and dragging a little bit. I didn't want to blow off that crumb when the background was really wet because I was afraid it would get, uh, I was afraid it would get like stuck in the background and then be like a super dark uh, brown smudge. Just care be careful around the whiskers, okay? And maybe just a little bit in the back of the neck there. My brush is just a little bit damp. It's not really wet, so keep that in mind. You don't want to uh, you don't want to wipe away everything. You just want to kind of soften here and there. It's all about balance. It's all about subtlety. Even though I'm probably like the most unsubtle person that you ever watch doing tutorials, there's still a certain subtlety <laughs> that you want to uh, that you want to achieve. Adding a little bit of a little bit of tone to the top of the nose. It's being it has a reflection on it, so it's not really dark, but you you got to have something there. You don't just want white. Okay, and then I'm using that gray, that dark gray, and I am just super gently adding little bits of shadow where I feel like um, I need it. I'm doing it in little furry strokes. I am gonna sharpen this so that I get a nice uh, point. And for our final, uh, our final details here, I'm just gonna pull out a little bit of fur around the eye. I'm going to pull a full couple furs in the ear. I'm gonna do some around the ear and on that back ear here. And really, that'll do it. Remember, you can always take a break and come back and look at your painting and see if you wanna add more. I think this looks fantastic and I hope you give it a try. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I wanna thank Amaze Rock for sponsoring this video. Be sure you sign up to win one of their three pencil wraps. They're giving away three to my viewers, so I'm really excited. We'll have three winners there. Also, a coupon code to save even more. The regular price on this set is $47, which is you know about what you'd expect to pay for decent uh, watercolor pencils, a set of 36. 
fabrics, but they're on sale for $21.30. I believe they were this morning when I checked. And then there's a 10% off discount code on their website. So just look in the video description to find all of the links for all the things I just mentioned. And good luck in the giveaway. I hope, uh, well, obviously three of you guys are gonna win. So um, I'm, I'm cheering y'all on though. I wish they could give one to everybody. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you are new. Until next time, happy crafting.